Hi, everybody. So my name is Frank Arnaud. I'm a FIS55 and Sharp1 developer and founder of my company called Ecos and based in Montreal. Uh, so today we will show you a quick uh, tutorial that we've made with Vincent a couple of weeks ago about uh, workspace provisioning, especially the Office 365 groups uh, provisioning. But first, uh, Vincent, uh, I'll let you introduce yourself. Sure. Uh, so hi, everyone. I'm Vincent. Some of you might know me from the days I used to be an MVP. No, I'm a PM on the Microsoft Graph team. So if you have any questions or feedback about the Microsoft Graph, you can contact me if you want. Uh, interesting enough, since I joined Microsoft, I don't have access to the chat on the PMP calls. So if you want to run jokes about me, go in the chat. I cannot see them. That's all good. Um, so to provide a little bit of context about uh, this uh, new um, repository and uh, this uh, effort we put together with, with Frank. Um, Frank and I, on, on our own uh, uh, separate sites, uh, over time, we uh, built multiple uh, provisioning engines that uh, reflect for some customers um, their line of business requirements around, hey, I want to provision things, but according to my line of business scenarios, because I have a set of rules, because I have a set of things that need to happen, uh, and it needs to be consistent, self service, and a few other things uh, like that. Um, and we got the opportunity um, almost two months ago now to um, animate a workshop together, to co animate a workshop together around how do you go and start building your provisioning engine. Doesn't matter your business requirements, doesn't matter uh, what you're doing, uh, you have a few. Uh, fundamentals, if you want, that you need to set in place so you can build a provisioning engine and be successful with it in, in, in your company. And with that, I will hand it back to Frank so he can show yeah. you uh, what the repository contains and, and how do you go about you know, using the content and, and experimenting on your site. Thank you, Vincent. So, uh, yeah, so first thing, you have a, a dedicated repository on GitHub, so you have the URL here. So basically, this is a solution coming from a real project, a real customer project. So it provides uh, very basic building blocks to create a provisioning solution, especially the 365 groups uh, provisioning solution. So the initial uh, context was, in my case, uh, to avoid the, let's say, the shop on site sprawling, because you know when you create the 365 groups. Uh, through teams or through a team size, so it creates SharePoint sites. And sometimes you want to apply a template to this SharePoint site, uh, let's say to create some metadata columns and the classification uh, and so on. So this is for the context. You can also read a, a blog post uh, by Laura Kokarinen about the provisioning uh, concerns. So uh, give you more context about this. So I will jump to the architecture uh, first. So the architecture is pretty simple. So first of all, we have uh, a workspace request list, which is a SharePoint list. Uh, of course, this one can be updated or enhanced by a Power Apps application or SPFX uh, web part to take the information, to grab the information from the user. So the, the workspace name and so on. Then we have some Azure um, artifacts. So the first one would be a, a webhook, SharePoint webhook to catch the event of the new uh, item creation. Then we have a logic app, uh, logic application. So this will be to uh, run the provisioning routine through uh, an automation uh, runbook uh, with PowerShell using PNP templates, XML templates, and the communication between um, SharePoint and uh, Graph API will be done by an Azure Active Directory application. And we have also a Teams configuration. Uh, yeah, so I will show you this right now. So I will show you the end user experience. So I've created a site here with a work workspace request list. Um, so basically, the experience is just to create a new item. So we provide in this solution very basic fields like what is the name of my workspace? Uh, my workspace PNP3. Uh, provide some metadata, so based on taxonomy. This one will be uh, used as default value for a specific column in your site. So just an example, who will be the owner? And for instance, the member 
you want to add and a quick description. And then while you do that, the very interesting about uh, this, it's again, it's uh, uh, basic concepts on how you do, do you go about uh, setting provisioning engines. If you look at the category and the and the taxonomy we're using, then you can leverage that in your engine in terms to do things like apply retention la labels and policies, uh, tag some items for a search and discovery, or use that for uh, you could build a web part to you know to discover the different different workspaces that are already in place. You, you have, that unlocks a set of scenarios that you can use um, and implement at your company. And, and and the goal of this content and training is to to show you how do you go about what what alternatives and and uh, options you have to implement those basic blocks for getting a request, uh, automating things, um, creating things on on different different places like SharePoint or Office 365 or uh, Teams and so on and so forth. Yep. So I won't wait uh, for the, the creation, but I will take a uh, previously created one. So behind the scenes, so a new Office 365 group has been created with a shop on site. So it's, it's not very impressive here, but uh, basically a template has been applied with some uh, metadata, some columns, uh, and also a Teams has been created with specific channels and so on. So uh, I, I will go to the technical part of this thing. Uh, so first of all, um, you will have to create a new Azure AD application. So if I go to my uh, Azure tenant, so I created a new Azure AD application with specific permissions. So uh, make sure you use the same Azure tenant as your Office 365 tenant. So you will need graph permission and SharePoint permission uh, configured with application permission and not delegated permission. So these are the minimum permission that you will uh, need to set up to get it work. Um, so next, this will be the creation of the Azure artifact, like uh, like the I shown in the application uh, architecture. Uh, so this services and artifact can be created in, a, in another uh, Azure tenant if you want. And this is the case here. So I've created, if I go back to the architecture, the first thing I've created is the SharePoint webhook uh, as a function. So I've created an, uh, sorry, an Office 365 provisioning group. Then I have another function. We'll show you just the code. Basically, the Azure function, yeah. So the Azure function here is to implement the SharePoint webhook. Uh, you will see this is a minified code. And to get the, to create your own code, I provide you the code here in the repository. So you will have a SP trigger function. So this function is written in uh, using TypeScript because I'm, I'm a TypeScript guy. So I like to, uh, to write uh, TypeScript everywhere, backend and frontend. So the purpose of this function is just to get the new event, uh, the new item event, and uh, pass it to the logic app, to the logic application. So why using a webhook over uh, a logic app trigger? Because you know, when using logic app, you can use the, the built-in trigger when a new item is created in a list. Uh, it's about the strategy and the cost involved in the, in this situation. When using the default trigger, uh, this, this will be a polling strategy, meaning the system will uh, reach will make a call every n seconds to get a new item. Uh, this will be counted as a, an action with, with uh, within Azure, so you'll be charged for that. Uh, instead of doing that, and because it's Cool. We've made we made a, a webhook. So instead of polling the system regularly, we will be notified by SharePoint there is a new item in the list. Uh, so in terms of uh, of cost, it's uh, it's it's more optimized. So basically, this function gets uh, retrieved the new items. So we just want the add uh, operation here and uh, send the. The, only the ID of the new item uh, in the list. Then this 
ID will be used by the logic application. So if I go back to my Office uh, Azure group, I will have a logic app here. So basically the logic app take an HTTP request with only the item ID of the SharePoint item. Then we just get the um, information about this item, set the provisioning status, and the interested part is uh, using a runbook, uh, create a new job uh, running a, a PowerShell runbook. So in this uh, workbook, basically, uh, you will have a PowerShell script. So if you go back to my code, here you have a PowerShell script uh, called new workspace.ps1. Uh, basically, it's, it's a regular PowerShell script using PNP PowerShell to uh, to apply provisioning templates and, and um, configure the SharePoint site. So basically, what you have to to know here, the, the the important parts here are the connection to the graphs. So to communicate with the graphs, you will need an application ID and an application secret. And to communicate with SharePoint, you will have to get a certificate. So that's, this is the main difference. So uh, before uh, deploying this solution, you will have to create a self-signed certificate, then uh, configure it to your runbook. So SharePoint, so you can just communicate with SharePoint using this certificate. Uh, this is all explained in the in the tutorial. So uh, the the communication will be with the certificate. So basically, we create a new unified group here. So it will create a new Office 365 group. And an interesting thing uh, here uh, is because this script is run as the application identity, um, the Office 365 group owners will be the application, the Azure AD application. So that's not why, what we want here. So what we need to do is to set the owner manually after the creation. And this operation, uh, let's say it's not in, uh, instantaneous. So it can be weird for the users. They create, they create their workspace and they are not owner right now. They have to wait a couple of minutes uh, because under the behind the scenes, uh, the, the permission are synchronized between all the, the workloads behind the, the Office 365 groups. So that's why we set up the uh, owners manually after the group's creation. Uh, then we just apply a new provisioning template to the site. Uh, very simple here. And we configure uh, taxonomy values. So we configure metadata for this site. So for this, we use uh, the property bag of the site collection. Uh, and I give you a trick here. So you can just uh, reuse the same format as a tax, uh, taxonomy uh, value for the, for the search. So you, you will be able to use this category, categorization uh, for the search and especially the modern, modern search web part. So just follow this format. Uh, to represent that represent the taxonomy value, and you will be you will able, be able to use it within the modern search. Um, yeah, and then basically you can do whatever you want in this script. You have the connection set up and um, and the template provided. Uh, it's a very simple template, so you can just add it, uh, add, add your stuff here. And uh, if I go back to the logic application, so we just pass this parameter to my um, to my script, wait for the job to finish, and then notify the user uh, the group has been created. And also, I, I forgot the team sports. We also create some Microsoft Teams on the node, and we configure some channels uh, just to give you the, an example on how to create and configure uh, a, micro, uh, a team inside Microsoft Teams. So for that, uh, Vincent uh, wrote a quick function, another function as well, uh, written in c -sharp. So you can have the code right here, Teams config function. And basically, this will uh, create new channel according to your, uh, to your template uh, within the Office 365 group and the teams uh, behind it. 
So basically, um, you can adapt the logic application according to your requirements. You have the code, you have uh, all the tutorial here. So make sure you have all the prerequisites before running this uh, this tutorial. And uh, it's it's very detailed. So we we've made a, a live presentation of this uh, during a workshop. It works. <laughs> so you can just go through all the steps and uh, see all the screenshots uh, associated uh, with all the steps. And if you have issues, uh, just raise your issue in the in the, in the issue list uh, within this uh, this repository. And of course, yeah. if you have question, just reach me or Vincent. Uh, yes, and I, I, as Frank mentioned, uh, even though we're talking about a lot of different technologies and it might be uh, frightening, um, we were able to go through the whole uh, tutorial with 20 people. Some of them were developers, some of them were uh, citizen developers, let's call it this way. And everyone uh, went through the tutorial at the end of the day, uh, uh, in one day. Even if you're not super interested about provisioning, it's a very good way to get exposure to .NET Core, uh, TypeScript development, uh, Azure Functions, Azure uh, Logic Apps, and uh, a lot of other technologies like the Microsoft Graph and PMP PowerShell and PMP provisioning. It's kind of a mashup of a lot of technologies you will see. And it's very interesting for you to ramp up on all of those different technologies at once if you go through the steps. The steps are very detailed. And if you see things that don't make sense or so on, uh, again, issues, pull requests, even if you feel like uh, offering a, a, a pull request to fix the content. Um, and yeah, everything is here on the repo for you to, to follow. Yep. Excellent. 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 Thank you, guys. So really, really awesome stuff. It is an awesome exercise to learn how to get started on things. And it's a self-service guidance. Or you can actually even reuse that as your workshop, even potentially. But do or obviously let Frank and, and Vincent know if there's any issues on that. So brilliant, brilliant, brilliant stuff. Mm -hmm.